It's hard to believe, but our school has lost more computing medals because students did not grasp the proper way to use a scanner in competition. Uh, this has been a bigger issue than any other issue that we have faced in the competitions that we have attended. We came in third in the Quinnipiac competition, but we would have had a silver medal and come in second if the team did not waste so much time on trying to fix the scanner issues at the beginning of the two and a half hours they were allowed for the competition. Seeing this problem, I asked the students the second year we attended Quinnipiac to make sure they thoroughly go over scanner before attending the competition and lo and behold, the exact same issue arose and uh, they ended up not getting a medal at all because the scanner stuff basically eluded them. The way that scanner is taught in computer science A is not the best way for the scanners to be used in competition and so I'm making this video to try and explain the difference. Uh, so let's start off by looking at how the scanner is typically used in a computer science A class. What you see here is a program to read a file. This file is called input.txt and I've shown it here in this box. And you can see that the file is in the same format that would be typical for a problem at either Lockheed or Quinnipiac where the first line com contains a single number that tells you how many data entries there are. Here our file contains a three to show that three data entries follow. And each data entry is a single line and for this particular example we're pretending that the first item in the line is an integer, the second item is a decimal number, and then the third item is a single word that we're going to read in as a string. So what we want to do is we want to show how to read in this file and the first example, the one that you see here, is the CSA example of how to use scanners. Now I want to uh, point out a few things about this particular example and then what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes to this example to show the right way to use scanners in a competitive environment. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that there is a try-catch block here and the reason for that is if we don't have the try-catch block the definition of the file uh, which is here is going to become a problem because the compiler will complain that there's an uncaught exception here so that's why we need the try-catch block. The other thing you'll notice is that the scanner is defined up here before the try-catch block and more importantly outside the try-catch block and the reason for that is that when we use the scanner below to read stuff outside the try-catch block if we declare the scanner here where it's first used by the time it gets to the closing parentheses on the catch block the scanner variable will go away and so here where we use it to read in the number of runs uh, it will be out of scope the compiler will complain that the scan variable no longer exists so that's why we have declared the scanner variable and set it equal to null outside the try catch block and by setting it outside by declaring it outside the try catch block uh, we guarantee that it's going to live through the entire rest of the main method okay now you can see that this file uh, has a number on the first line that tells you how many data entries there are and then there are the data entries themselves one line each. So the first thing we do is we're using this next int feature to read how many data entries are going to be and we're storing it in this variable called runs and that tells us how many times to run the for loop to read the rest of the file. What we're doing for each line is that we're reading an integer, a double, and then we're using the next line method to read the string that's going to read the word at the end of each line. Now when we use these next features uh, I want to point out that for example when we use the next int or the next double what happens is that it, advan it advances the read head. So for example let's say we're reading this line right here one two hello and we just finished executing the scan.nextint. So what happens is that the one is placed into the integer data variable and the read head is positioned right after the one but before the blank that exists between the one and the 2.0 on this line. 
The fact that it is placed before the blank is important, and we'll get to that when we talk about reading the strings in the line. Similarly, after we execute the next double, the read head is positioned between the zero in the 2.0 and the blank that's in front of the hello. Then when we go to read the word data, which is the last item on the line, we're using this next line feature, which reads the remainder of the line as a string. It's going to read the word hello, but it's also going to prepend the word hello with the blank that's in front of it. Let's. Uh, Let's run this program. Notice that I'm reading each of these things and then I'm basically echoing the results to the console to show that I've read them correctly. Let's compile and run this. And you can see that this blank here has been uh, prepended to the string portion of the uh, part that we read in. Now we can try and fix this one of several ways. One easy way would be to put a trim statement right here. And as a reminder, what the trim statement will do is it will remove the leading and trailing blanks from the string. So now if we were to compile and run this again, you can see that the leading blanks are now gone from the string portion of the variable. But the point that I wanted to make is that this is not really a good strategy overall uh, in terms of how to deal with scanners in a competitive environment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some changes to this file uh, to, sh to make it more competition friendly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this try catch block altogether because that's a complication we just do not want to deal with in a competitive environment. Uh, we do not have any need for detailed error handling in the competition. We're not going to get any brownie points for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to get rid of the try catch block. Now you notice that when I go to compile, it's going to say that there's an uh, un uncaught exception. So in order to fix that, I'm simply going to put in here uh, a couple of extra keywords to get rid of uh, this particular error. Now you'll notice that the error for the uncaught exception is gone. What I've done here is I've simply told the compiler that the operating system is going to handle any errors that occur in this main method, and so now I don't have to deal with it. Likewise, since the try catch block is gone, I don't have to separately declare the scanner here. I can simply declare it on the same time, same line that it's first used. And now we've made some simplifications. The main change, though, that we want to make in the code is that instead of using these things called next int, next double, uh, et cetera, what we want to do instead is we want to read everything in as a string, one line at a time, and then convert it to whatever other formats that we need. So for example, here you can see instead of doing next int, what I would rather do I'm going to read that as a string now, and then I'm going to convert it to an integer by using the parse command. And I'm basically going to use that same strategy uh, for all these other data items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read each case here as a single line. Now that I've read the line, I'm going to split it uh, using the split command. Notice I'm using the space character as a delimiter so that each item in the line will will end up in a different uh, to token here in this array. And now I can simply take each of these and read them out of the array. Okay, you can see now that uh, instead of re using the fancier uh, uh, next int and next double methods, I've simply used only the uh, next line method to read each line as a string and then use the split method to break it up into tokens. So uh, what I'm going to do now is compile and run this one. And you can see it works exactly uh, the same way. Notice that there are no leading blanks, by the way, 
in front of the words that we are reading here as strings. Now I just want to provide you with one bit of caution using this technique, which by the way is a much better technique to use for competition. Uh, that is that if your input file has extra blanks in it, this is going to create some problems using this technique here. So let me show you what I'm getting at. Let's say that there was an extra space right here between where the second token was defined and the third token was supposed to start. If that happens, if I compile and run this program again, you can see now that the word is not reading properly. To understand why that is, since we're using a single delimiter to delimit between the fields, you can see that there are two delimiters here and so it's assuming that the, the third token, which is token sub two, uh, is simply the empty string. Uh, likewise, if I was to put in an extra blank here that shouldn't be here, I'll get into even more trouble. And you can see now if I run this, it's gonna actually produce a runtime error. You can see that once again, I run into a problem here. So this particular technique is a little sensitive to extra spaces. However, the people who put these competitions together uh, typically are pretty careful about not having these extra blanks inside, your, inside their input files that they provide to you. And so uh, this is still the preferred technique for uh, reading data from an input file. Now, I've used a scanner here. It's also possible to do a buffered read, and uh, elsewhere in this textbook, we will demonstrate that technique as well.